Um, the next question pertains to safety for commercial sex workers who are particularly vulnerable to violence because of the criminalization of sex trade. Work from scientists like Dr. Elizabeth Barner here at UCLA, who many of us heard from um, leading up to this talk, led to California state legislation that prevented underage girls from being arrested for, quote, prostitution, um, and instead recognized them as victims of sexual child abuse um, with pressing medical and psychological needs. In this case, systematic decriminalization led to better safety and health outcomes for victims of sexual violence and trafficking. Mr. Gascon, during your time as DA in San Francisco, you implemented a policy that the district attorney's office will not prosecute people for involvement in sex work or when they are victims or witnesses of violent crimes. Um, this is a question for both of you. How do you envision the role of the DA in terms of their responsibility to ensure justice for commercial sex workers? What challenges to imp implementing such policies here in Los Angeles do you envision facing? Yeah, not only did we stop prosecuting sex workers and we were the first county in the state and probably one of the few in the country, we started way back in 2012. Uh, we also established a policy in late 2011, early 2012, that we stopped using condoms as evidence of sex work. Because one of the things that occurs in many prosecutorial offices is that condoms are often used as evidence that there was commercial sex, which leads to really bad public health practices because then it encourages sex workers not to use condoms, which creates a whole host of other problems. The reality is that sex workers are generally going to come in one of two categories. Either they're being forced into sex trade, and they are really victims of a system, and we have to treat them as victims, and most of the time prosecutors don't, and certainly LA doesn't. But there may be some that are actually engaging in this practice because that is a free will. And we also have to recognize that because there's a whole, there's a union of sex workers in the state. And there are, you know, men and women that, you know, they're engaging in this practice and they're telling us at least that they're doing so by their own free will and understanding that nuance and also being able to address it accordingly. The bottom line is that we cannot criminalize sex work because when we do, not only do we drive human trafficking underground and we push the victims and survivors to go to a place where they will never avail themselves of support that they need, but more importantly, because when we do that, we also create the unintended consequences, sometimes creating a public health problem. So the reality is that we need to understand that sex workers in the majority of the time are gonna be really victims of a crime and that we have to provide in the on ramps and we have to be there when they are willing to talk. At the same time, we have to provide the service that they need and they cannot be conditioned upon a willingness to prosecute or a willingness to be a witness, which is a problem in this county also, where sometimes victims are not only brought in, but they do what is called a body attachment, which is they are held in jail in contempt that they refuse to cooperate with the prosecution, which often can lead to greater harm because they're going to be then harmed by their, their pimps or their traffickers.